This hour, the podcast is exclusively sponsored by my good friends at Advantage Gold. Advantage Gold is a five-star rated gold company with one-of-a-kind customer service. And when it comes to gold and precious metals, Advantage Gold is the only company I'll work with. Call Advantage Gold today and make sure you let them know that Mark Levin sent you. And now, let's begin. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting them from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Mark Levin here, our number, 877 the State of, Con- um, of uh, the Union confusion speech is uh, 9 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow, so it won't be on this program. Obviously, we'll discuss it before and after. Typically, they are forgettable occasions, where a president goes up there and brags about all the things he's done and lies about it. And there'll be no bigger liar, serial liar, psychotic liar than Joe Biden. And this speech is being worked on by his propagandists, a.k.a. speechwriters, his campaign, his operatives, and their ilk. They're going to exploit the war that Israel's fighting against Hamas. Uh, They're going to lie about abortion in this country. They're going to lie about the border if only the Republicans would have supported the cockamamie, ridiculous bill they call bipartisan because three, four senators fell for it, and even Mitch McConnell voted against it. He really screwed up. They're going to blame Trump. They're going to talk about democracies at stake. I'm serious, folks. Democracies at stake. We will lose our country, that I saved our country when I was elected January 6th. It's all so boring, all so predictable, all so Democrat Party. I want to tell you about abortion in America. We've talked about it, but I want to underscore it since it'll be on nonstop display. The word is they're going to have somebody in the gallery who had to leave the state to go to another state to get an abortion. You know what's funny, Mr. Producer? I'd leave my state to go see a cardiologist in another state. Are you aware of that? Oh, yeah. It's true. I literally had to leave my state to go to another state. Yes. Why aren't I in the gallery? Why isn't he calling on me? Good point, Mr. Bidouze. Oh, well. People have to leave a state a lot of time for all kinds of medical treatment and medical care. Uh, I don't view it as a huge burden. You're going to have an abortion. Is it that much of a burden to go to another state? Or should the entire state accommodate the individual? I mean, come on. How hard is it really? We got abortionists in this country. They're ubiquitous. They're everywhere. I'm going to prove it to you, ladies and gentlemen. Wait a minute. You had to leave the state? For an abortion? Yeah, I did. People leave states for cancer doctors. 
for other kinds of specialists, for heart doctors. That's a great thing about America. There's 50 states and some territories, and you can actually get up and go to a place that you believe serves your interests, your needs. You can actually move there. You can actually, at least for now, get in an automobile that works with a combustion engine and drive there. Plus, we have hundreds of millions of dollars poured into Planned Parenthood and other such front organizations that are more than happy to take you to these places. What exactly is the position of the Democrat Party on abortion? They want more abortions? Is that it? Is that it? Less babies, more abortions? Because I'll tell you, I have access to a report that everybody has access to, but I actually do my research. I put it on my social media twice. I used it on Fox once. I've used it on Blaze once. I've used it on radio once, and I'm going to use it again. And for some reason, the knuckleheads, the Republicans on Capitol Hill, don't embrace it, don't read it, don't talk about it. And the organization is a left-wing pro-abortion organization. It's called the Gutmacher Institute, G-U-T-T-M-A-C-H-E-R. You don't have to believe me, check it out. Gutmacher.org. They put out the report, they put it out with a press release, they're not hiding it. So since the Dobbs decision, there have been more abortions in the United States than before. Wow. Those Republicans are really good at at blocking abortions. No, they're not. Number of abortions in the United States likely to be higher in 2023 than in 2020. We actually know now that they are. This report came out in January of this year. In the first 10 months of 2023, I'm quoting, I'm reading from the text. There were an estimated 878,000 abortions in the formal U.S. health care system. 94% as many abortions as were provided in 2020, 930,000. Keep in mind, that's 10 months. So that will exceed 2020. I'm sure the abortionists are thrilled. Approximately 88,000 abortions have been provided in the formal health care system per month so far in 2023. So with two months of data yet to be published, it's very likely that the total number of abortions provided in 2023 will substantially exceed 2020 numbers. So what are the abortionists and their supporters in the Democrat Party complaining about? The actual increase in abortions is likely even larger, a left-wing group, that these numbers suggest because these counts do not include abortions occurring outside the formal health care system, you know, like Planned Parenthood, which are likely to have increased substantially following the implementation of state bans and restrictions. There's also state expansions, of course. Isaac Madal Zimmet, data scientist at the Kakbach Project. He says an increase in abortion numbers is a positive development if it means people are getting the health care they want to need. Oh, but it's very problematic in this sense. However, folks, despite the fact that abortions are through the roof, like never before, since the Dobbs decision, We know, he says, that many people in 2023 had to overcome immense barriers to access care, often traveling across state lines to do so. Is that an immense hurdle, Mr. Producer? I just said, people go across state lines to go on vacation. They go across state lines to work. They go across state lines maybe to go to a restaurant. They go to cross state lines to get other kind of medical care. I just spoke about my own experience earlier this week. I actually had to leave Virginia and go to Maryland, a place I never want to go to. We have what's called automobiles. We have trucks. We have trains. We have buses. We have airplanes. We have motorcycles. But you see, it's an immense burden. It's an immense barrier. Well... I'm sorry. Maybe we should have people go to their homes, Mr. Producer. Would that be better? I've talked about a home colonoscopy kit. Remember that, Mr. Producer? And I encourage you leftists to go ahead and acquire one and get on with it. 
There's been no slowdown of abortions in America. There's been no incredible hurdles and barriers, immense barriers to overcome. We have 50 states. This is how it was intended to be. Some states have the death penalty. Some don't. Some have income taxes. Some don't. Some have this. Some have that. In terms of health care and medical care and all the rest of it. And some states are very thrilled and excited to have a burgeoning abortion business. Some states are not. And so those who seek, want, or need abortions, I'm sorry there's this immense barrier of going to a neighboring state, perhaps. But that's the way it is. And I know the radicals and the extremists and the anti-lifers, they want abortion on demand in every corner of the country. That's because they're sick. And they want abortion on demand. They want partial birth abortion. They want abortions three seconds before a baby is born. That's okay by them. It's not okay by me. We've had millions and millions and millions of millions of abortions in this country. And the Democrat Party wants you women to think, particularly women in the suburbs, most of whom have never had abortions, but for some reason this is an obsession. That it's become prohibitive. That we have immense barriers to prevent it. It's a lie. It's a lie. The data demonstrates that it's a lie. And I'll try it one more time. Since the Dobbs decision, abortion in the United States has increased significantly. Almost 15%. Almost 15%. We discuss this in a sterile way, you know, in a data way. We discuss it like, like the liberals want us to discuss it. It's a woman's right to choose. Well, that's a flippant way to talk about eliminating another life that has no voice, none. They can't lobby Congress. They can't bring lawsuits against the Supreme Court. They can't exercise their constitutional rights. They're disposable. I love the scientists, the CDC and their ilk. I love these people that go on TV and tell us about vaccines and COVID and all the rest. Follow the science. Follow the science, they say. And they're never asked. It's amazing. What does the science tell us? about another human being, particularly in the last trimester, just to put a fine point on the issue, is that tissue or is it a human being? What does the science tell us? What does the science tell us? It tells us it's a human being. Just like the science tells us, if you have a penis, you're a male, you have a vagina, you're a female. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I disrupting the apple cart? That's science. Biology, we call it. At least we used to. Now, of course, we're to ignore that science. The science of abortion. We're supposed to ignore that, too. Let me repeat. There's a reason why they don't actually show abortions on television, on PBS, or any documentary, on all the thousands of channels there are. You'll get everything but. Why is that? It's a right to choose, right? It's not a baby, right? It's harmless. It's painless, right? Then show us. But they won't. But you Democrats should be thrilled. Joe Biden, practicing Catholic, a self-hater. Nancy Pelosi, likewise. You're going to go hear them wringing their hands and talking about the Republicans want to take a woman's right to choose away. While it's ubiquitous. So what the Democrats actually seem to be saying, we don't have enough abortions. We need more. The more, the better. After all, it's not a life, it's a choice. It's non-existent. 
unless we say it's existent. You have to twist your mind into pretzels to believe as these vile, immoral, dehumanizing, radical leftists believe. I don't care what your faith is. Follow the science. Follow the data. Don't be a denier. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Our once mighty dollars under siege from runaway inflation. For those still working, your paychecks buy less while costs for gas, food, cars, utilities skyrocket thanks to inflation. That's why I'm urging all my listeners to register for the upcoming Gold and Silver Summit hosted by our friends at Advantage Gold. It's a fantastic seminar. They'll teach you how to take steps to help guard your wealth from inflation using asset diversification into physical precious metals. Gold and silver hold intrinsic value that should remain untouched by government manipulation. Folks, don't wait for the Fed's reckless policies to completely devalue the dollar and steal your life savings. Call now while free registration is open. I'm telling you, this is a fantastic seminar. Call 800 900 8000 right now. The Gold and Silver Summit could provide the vital insights we need to protect our families. 800 900 8000. Tell them Mark Levin sent you. Performance may vary. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Always consult your financial and tax professionals. So much of what we hear is propaganda, it's lies, it's pseudo-events. So much of what you don't hear is based on censorship, disinformation, and misinformation. Like the entire abortion debate issue is phony. It's filled with lies. Why? Because it helps the Democrats. That's why the entire debate about abortion... Um, as I say, the vast majority of you have never seen what an abortion looks like. And yet you're told it's perfectly fine, it's safe, it's a civil right. And they do this because they believe suburban women, and according to surveys, suburban women, uh, support abortion. Maybe not on a demand, maybe not by teenagers without parental notification, but as a general rule, so every time they hear abortion, they oh, you're opposed to it, that guy's for it, I'm voting for Nikki Haley. Okay, great. I'm voting for Larry Hogue. I'm voting for, it's a woman's right to choose. Excuse me. A couple of points. A woman has a right to choose, but there needs to be a moral debate about the other person. It's not a person. Well, isn't that convenient? It's not a person? What does the science tell us? It is a person. Particularly when it's easy, Right? particularly after three months, particularly after one month. But I don't even need to go that far. I'm just saying they don't support limitations on abortion on the left, the Democrat Party. So this is how they feel they're going to get women to vote. And they do. And I wish women would really start paying attention, those who fall for this, for this propaganda, to the facts, to the actual facts. If this is your big issue, I feel sorry for you. If somebody having to go from one state to another is an immense barrier, I feel sorry for you. I'll be right back. Fellow patriots, America is now $34 trillion in debt and it's climbing higher as we speak. This is not sustainable and this debt could be putting every American's retirement at risk. You need to put a plan in place and I know just the right people to help you. You should consider the top rated gold company, Advantage Gold, to help you take steps to protect your wealth. They're hosting a free online investment seminar called the Gold and Silver Summit where they will help you plan for what could be the worst recession of our lifetime. This is serious, folks. You need a plan, and the amazing people at Advantage Gold can help. Just give them a call. It's painless. 800 900 8000. Sign up for this free online event. The number is easy. Just call 800 900 8000. Mention my name, Mark Levin, to claim exclusive bonuses. Call 800 900 8000. Get registered for this free online investment seminar right now. 
performance may vary. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Always consult your financial and tax professionals. The new American Revolution starts here. The Mark Levin Show. Call in at 877-381-3811. Now, of course, Slow Joe is going to be talking about democracy. That he saved democracy once already from MAGA Trump and the extremists from the January 6th insurrectionists. I can hear it now. I could write his speech. He saved us. And we must not, must not allow them to threaten us again. Autocrats. We must not allow them. MAGA. Make America great again. Hitler. He won't say it. He'll imply it. They threatened our country once before. A revolution. They tried to prevent the peaceful transfer of power. You hear it. I hear it. We know it. No. Let's talk about this. There's a great piece today at Town Hall by the indefatigable Byron York. It's called Trump Lawfare Update. He said, this is interesting, and indeed it is. He says, former President Donald Trump's victory in the Supreme Court 14th Amendment case, together with delay and disorder in the criminal cases against him, has set off panic among Democrats who hope to use prosecutions and other legal maneuvers to keep Trump from winning a second term. I hope Supreme Court justices are listening. Not the Three Stooges, the others. Supreme Court ruling darkens critics' hopes for a judicial curb on Trump, read one headline in the Washington Post, because the media is in on it. It's a state-supporting, one-party media, like you see in other tyrannies and totalitarian regimes. That's what we have now. You might find it outrageous that people in positions of great power and responsibility in the midst of a campaign would use the judicial system, the justice system, to curb one of two major presidential candidates. You might find it outrageous that those people, a coalition of elected Democrats, Biden administration appointees, Democrat Party activists, and career lawfare specialists are in fact desperately pushing the system to work faster, to win verdicts by Election Day. But there it is. But there it is. It's now acceptable for Democrats to put the Republican nominee in prison or to get him off a ballot. If they could, they would. And this is the party that hates the Constitution, hates the founders, but tell you that they're upholding the Constitution. Marxists like Jamie Raskin, who's a coward. The anti-Trump coalition has launched six main attacks on Trump. Attack number one is the federal indictment brought by the Justice Department appointed special counsel Jack Smith, charging Trump with 40 felony counts in the classified documents case. Number two is the federal indictment also brought by Smith, charging Trump with four felonies in the 2020 election in January 6th case. Number three is the sprawling 13 felony count racketeering indictment based on the 2020 election brought against Trump and 18 co-defendants in Georgia by the elected Democrat Fulton County DA, Fannie Willis. Attack number four is the 34 felony count indictment based on the payment. He calls it hush money. It's a non-disclosure agreement. In the 2016 election, brought by the elected Democratic Manhattan DA, Alvin Bragg. Number five is the effort launched by various activists around the country to remove Trump from presidential ballots by declaring him an insurrectionist under the terms of Section 3, 14th Amendment. And number six is the effort to bankrupt Trump by way of a lawsuit brought by the elected Democratic New York State Attorney General Letitia James. You know, when you just read that. <coughs> Excuse me. When you just read that. It's horrendous. And of course, the media supports it every step of the way. But it's horrendous. Now, with their efforts in the news daily, it might be a good time to see where things stand. Go through them in a reverse order of importance. That is, starting with the cases least likely to hurt Trump this year, he writes. 14th Amendment removal campaign is over. Having all nine Supreme Court justices agree that no state can take Trump off the ballot is a decis- as decisive as it gets. 
Still, and keep an eye on this, you might see the 14th Amendment argument revived if Trump wins. And congressional Democrats look for a way to prevent him from taking office. Now, ladies and gentlemen, does it sound like they care about democracy? They only care about democracy if they win. When they lose, they don't believe in democracy. All right, let's keep at this. The Georgia case, what can be said about it? Right now, everyone is waiting for a judge to decide whether to remove Willis from the case on the basis of charges of misconduct raised by a number of defense lawyers. If Willis is removed, the entire case might collapse for one of another prosecutor to pursue it. The federal classified documents case was always going to be hard to do this year, given that it involves millions of documents, security clearances, and special handling of evidence. The judge in the case has entertained suggestions of starting the trial midsummer. It seems extremely unlikely, and a verdict before Election Day seems even more unlikely. The New York lawsuit. Unlike the others, this has been a ringing success for the people seeking Trump's financial ruin, trying flimsy and blatantly unfair charges before a compliant judge. Under New York law, Trump did not have the right to a jury trial. James won a $454 million judgment against the former president. Even if he manages to reduce the award on appeal, Trump has been damaged. And James is having a ball touting him on social media. The federal 2020 election. In the January 6th case, this is the showpiece case. The one so many anti-Trump forces have pinned their hopes on. Because they see it as the prime vehicle to hold Trump quote-unquote accountable. One of their favorite words for his efforts to challenge the 2020 Results. Hold him accountable. Trial was originally scheduled to begin this week, but has been delayed by Trump's claim that he should be immune from charges over the acts he took as president. Smith is scrambling to keep the case on track, but the Supreme Court will rule not only on the immunity issue, which Trump is expected to lose. Excuse me. He may lose it, and he may lose it for two reasons. The intimidation being applied by the media and the legal analysts saying that he doesn't have a chance to win. So a lot of these Justices are watching this and listening this, and it becomes more and more difficult to do the right thing. But also on two of the four charges against Trump, that is the Enron obstruction charges, which are preposterous, which some argue simply do not apply to the case, and they don't, and they never should have. Congratulations to the phony partisan judges in Washington, D.C., Then we have the Manhattan case. Bragg was the first to file criminal charges against Trump. Safe to say he got little respect for it. Even Trump's adversaries admitted that the Bragg charges were weak. It's really a bunch of misdemeanors that Bragg conjured into felonies through a legally questionable maneuver. And by the way, all these efforts to use the law this way, to create first impressions, to drag in the Constitution, all these efforts defy and undermine advice that the legal system, the Justice Department, the bar in the past has given, which is you better be very, very careful when you take on a former president, when you take on a candidate for president, when you intervene in an election, which you're not supposed to do, and you can see every one of those barriers has been bulldozed. Every one of them. We don't even discuss it anymore. The other case, as bad as some of them are, Got more respect and attention, and Bragg stepped into the background, offering a delay, trying his case while the others went first, but now all those cases have encountered problems. And Bragg is steaming ahead to March 25 trial date, less than three weeks away, America. The reason for the Democratic panic is this. Some in the party think, sure, President Joe Biden is weak and his polls are terrible, but if he falters, there's always lawfare. How many times have I said this, Mr. Producer? They're counting on the perversion of the criminal justice system to win the election. How many times have I said this? Now, there's been a lot of movement with the big six cases. Five of them may not be resolved or resolved in Biden's favor before the election. So it could be that the entire hopes of the Democrat Party and all those who seek to bring down Trump before election rest with Bragg. Now, I will say this. You've got these incredibly unethical federal judges and New York state judges. Chunk in the key one. And she knows what her what her obligation is. She knows what her 
taskmaster in the case of Joe Biden of the Democrat Party require of her. And she will dispense with motions very quickly. And she will force this trial early and do everything humanly possible to do it and get a conviction. That's what she'll do. Because she's not a judge. She's a hack. Like so many in D.C. are. The judge in the Bragg case is an Obama-Biden supporter. He's another one of these elected, low-level trial judges. And the idea that a district attorney in Manhattan can use federal law to create, to invent federal state offenses, which is what he's trying to do, which is what Smith tried to do against John Edwards, because they all, they all learned from this, this punk, this sleazeball Smith. The idea that Trump can get a fair trial there is really quite preposterous. If he does, it'll be a, a blessing from God. Seriously. And then, of course, the Washington, D.C. case, where the population voted over 90% for Biden. They voted for Nikki Haley, another reprobate. I'll get to her later. Pretty incredible that a president of the United States is facing this. And on top of all that, I want to remind you. He already faced a criminal investigation with Mueller when he was president. They came up empty because all the information was planted by the Hillary Clinton campaign and the media. That was horrendous in and of itself. The Russia collusion prosecution. We already know that the FOIA court, excuse me, that the uh, FISA court was abused to try and take out Trump and his supporters. We already know that. We already know that these two impeachments against Trump were phony, fraudulent. One of them, the Senate took it up when he was a private citizen. We've never had that before. They charged him with insurrection, did the Democrats in the House, before they lost their majority, right before. Right before, and they set up the January 6th Stalinist Commission, which has destroyed massive amounts of the information that it gathered, including interviews and videos, texts and emails, talk about obstruction of justice but the system is fixed you see because they can't commit obstruction of justice they pass the laws that exclude them protected you see by the speech and debate clause they destroyed documents they destroyed information they destroyed videos but doesn't matter the federal judges in Washington DC press ahead We're throwing protesters, and I'm not talking about violent protesters, protesters in prison. With massive sentences. Even a panel on the circuit court said, hold on, boys and girls, you're getting a little carried away. That doesn't even apply here. So pull it back. Oh, justice. It's blind. No, justice isn't blind. You have blind partisanship and blind rhinos all throughout the judicial system now. That's what's going on. And that all has to be overcome in order to win this election. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Our once mighty dollars under siege from runaway inflation. For those still working, your paychecks buy less while costs for gas, food, cars, utilities skyrocket thanks to inflation. That's why I'm urging all my listeners to register for the upcoming Gold and Silver Summit hosted by our friends at Advantage Gold. It's a fantastic seminar. They'll teach you how to take steps to help guard your wealth from inflation using asset diversification into physical precious metals. Gold and silver hold intrinsic value that should remain untouched by government manipulation. Folks, don't wait for the Fed's reckless policies to completely devalue the dollar and steal your life savings. Call now while free registration is open. I'm telling you, this is a fantastic seminar. Call 800-900-8000 right now. The Gold and Silver Summit could provide the vital insights we need to protect our families. 800-900-8000. Tell them Mark Levin sent you. Performance may vary. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Always consult your financial and tax professionals. I have to make a decision. 
I have to make an executive decision. Do we play some clips from the haters, the reprobates, the Marxists, the Islamists? Do we play some clips from them trashing people in Virginia and West Virginia? Trashing President Trump. Claiming that rural Americans are racists. That's all they care about. Do we want to play Rachel Maddow and Jen Psaki and Joy Reid? Then there's Alex Wagner. I have no idea who she is, but she's there on MSNBC. Race animates Trump. This coming from the party of the racists, the Klan, the white supremacists. Claire McCaskill. Dumber than she looks. And let me tell you, she looks pretty damn done. The loser. The loser senator from the great state of Missouri, the show me state where they beg her. Please don't show us. Please. We see enough. Trump is a liar and a marketeer. Then we have John Heilman. Hi, Heilman. Part of the circus act over there at the morning schmo. Trump movement isn't what it once was. Okay, there he is. Then we have Nikki Haley. She's the worst of the bunch. You want to know the truth? Oh, but if we don't like Trump, there's always Nikki Haley. What does she stand for? I'm going to stand with her firmly. What does she stand for? I don't know, but I firmly stand with her firmly. I'm very firmly with her. She and I agree on the issues. What issue? I don't know, but I'm for Nikki. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship, Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811. Hello. 877-381-3811. 3811, that's right. You heard me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Joe Biden's going to tell you that Bidenomics works. Don't listen to all these pundits. We've done this, we've done that, we've done this, we've done that. Overwhelm us with federal data. Oh my God, it's never been so good. This is the greatest period of prosperity in American history. We've never seen anything like this. Well, not quite. Price of food is through the roof. Look at his three years worth of inflation. Now, inflation's way down. Of course, he lies. This is what you have to keep in mind about Joe Biden. He doesn't know how to tell the truth. He can't keep track of his lies. Never has. Never could. Never would. He's going to tell you how the price of fuel has come down, but he won't tell you the starting point. How the price of food is is affordable, despite the fact that you're having to cut corners and it's way, way up since he became president. He's going to tell you the the price of everything is just so fantastic and you can't afford a car used or new, barely afford to drive it. You're having to cut corners on food that you purchase for your family. You can't buy the kind of food you used to. You can't even find it in some cases. The supply chain is still broken. Look around. Look around. He's going to blame the companies and the corporations because Joe Biden takes responsibility for nothing. He's like a four-year-old who got caught. (laughs) That's Joe Biden. Price of oil goes up. It's Vladimir Putin. The border's wide open. It's Trump, MAGA, and the Republicans. There's inflation. Well... No, there isn't. Just pretend there's not. He's going to tell you there's more of everything that there should be. There's less of everything that there shouldn't be. He's going to have his propagandists writing his speeches. 
This is what you're going to get tomorrow. A Castro-like speech delivered by an imbecile. A Castro-like speech delivered by an imbecile. That's what you're going to get. And it's going to drive you crazy. So don't watch it. But Mark, there's a, no, there isn't. It's propaganda. You still have the right not to watch it. It ought to be the lowest rated State of the Union viewed address in American history. Well, modern American history since there's been television. That's what you ought to do. You're not going to miss anything. Except lies. Let me tell you what's on the horizon here. I found this the other day from Fortune. Among the illustrious nameplates adorning the offices of Ivy League business schools is one, Zayo Gomes, J-O-A-O-G-O-M-E-S, two words. He's a Wharton Business School finance professor. He's not running around the river to the sea crowd. That's most of the rest of the faculty. Gomes is issuing a warning cry many of his peers so far have chosen to ignore. This guy's been right over and over and over again. And what's his warning? says, America's burgeoning public debt mountain, public debt mountain, is a disaster on the horizon, and not the distant horizon. Professor Gomes is what some might call up and coming. He was appointed senior vice dean of research in 2021, adding University of Pennsylvania's Marshall Bloom Prize to the CV in 2018. That would be his resume. But the fresh-faced expert isn't afraid to step away from the pack if it means pushing presidential hopefuls for some answers. Gomes admits he's probably more worried than his colleagues about government debt, but refuses to stay silent on a broiling issue he believes will throw the global economy into dismay. Gomes predicts America's $34.5 trillion debt burden may upset the world's financial markets. As early as next year, should a president-elect announce a raft of expensive policies? And you're going to hear him tonight. And remember, the UK's mortgage meltdown following a disastrous premiership under Prime Minister Liz Truss. That's on the cards as well. As Gomes said, rates could spiral to 7% or higher if the topic is swept under the rug by Washington. The warning isn't chiming along since the beginning of the year an increasing cacophony of alarm bells has been ringing out jp morgan chase ceo jamie diamond when he's not fronting for the democrats says there will be a market rebellion over the issue while bank of america ceo brian moynihan says it's time to stop admiring the problem and instead do something about it now who are the only people wanting to do something about it who are they The conservatives in the House and in the Senate. That's it. Nobody else cares. Oh, a government shutdown. Let me tell you, if this happens, the government will shut down all right. It'll shut down. It'll crash like everything else. This isn't some joke. This isn't some conspiracy nut. This is serious. It's like Iran getting nukes and nobody talking about it but me. This fear is echoing outside of Wall Street, too. The black swan author, Nassim Tlaib, says the economy is in a death spiral, while Federal Chairman Jerome Powell says it's past time to have an adult conversation about fiscal responsibility. Can't have that. We don't have an adult in the Oval Office. We have a guy with the brain capacity of a two-year-old. But despite this, presidential candidates locally won't be getting on stage with promises of how they'll wrestle down the... Well, Nikki Haley will say she's been talking about the debt forever. I've asked, and I've asked, and I've asked, what will she do about it? A limit spending. What will you cut? She never says. Because the pro-abortion suburbanites, females, might get turned off. And so will the other reprobates. Now, I wish it was a big issue, but I'm not sure it's in the interest of either party to make it a big issue, Gomes told Fortune. Well, he's right about that. The debt-to-GDP ratio, GDP, all the economic activity that is produced, 
is a more palatable figure. Experts are currently predicting it will reach 190% by 2050. What does that mean? That means the debt will be twice the size of the economy, Mr. Producer. Twice the size of the economy. 26 years away, just in time to destroy the life of your children and your grandchildren. And it will destroy them. And we are building it up and building We are the most selfish generation. The one before us, this one, and the one coming in American history. It is beyond belief. I wrote this book, Plunder and Deceit. I laid it out page by page by page. Well, what good do these books do if I'm dead and gone and you're dead and gone and all these things come true? Other than people quoting from them. But who cares at that point? As we discuss promises, what we're going to do with tax and and, uh, tax programs, it's going to be important to put it in the context. Can we afford that? It is a really obvious moment in history for us to say, okay, what are our choices? What can we feasibly do? Who has the better plan? I suspect neither party is interested in, and it might all be pushed under the rug. Well, you know, that's very disingenuous. As I said, conservative Republicans in the House and a handful in the Senate have been talking about this. They're trying to do something about it. In the media, the corrupt ruling class, the establishment Democrats and Republicans, and of course Biden, who's not just a true blue illiterate, but an economic illiterate. He doesn't give a damn. He's on his last legs. I'm just being honest. And he had while one party... We'll have to make some unpopular decision to tackle the issue. It's a problem created by both of them. Okay, so here we do the moral equivalency. We have the Democrats spending like drunken Marxists. We have the, the Republicans way overspending. But whatever the Republicans do, the Democrats always double down. So there's nothing to stop any of this. You listen to that speech tomorrow night, those of you who have a stomach for it. And you'll see. Gomes believes that irrespective of who contributed to the mess, one party is going to have to shoulder the responsibility for unpicking it. He said, to the latter part of the decade, we will have to deal with this. We will have to deal with this, America. We could derail the next administration, frankly, he said. If they come up with plans for large cuts or another fiscal stimulus, the markets could rebel. Interest rates could just spike right there. We could have a crisis in 2025. It could very well happen. I'm very confident by the end of the decade, one way or another, that's what's going to happen. This is why I diversify with gold. I don't just talk about it. I do it. At a policy level, Gomes believes this will be when the parties buying debt decide the model is simply no longer sustainable. Here's where he's wrong. The Democrat Party radicals want the country to collapse. The Marxists and the Islamists, which make up the loudest part of the Democrat Party base, even though their numbers are somewhat limited, their power outguns their numbers. And these are the people who are going to drive us to the brink. These are the people who want an economic collapse, the Bernie Sanders, the AOCs, the Talibs, the Omars, and the rest of the reprobates. That's what they want. Because then they can start society all over again. And we can have peace and prosperity and equity and equality. We can remove all the white dominant people. We can have just a fantastic opportunity here for, for world peace. And, and not only that, everybody will be equal. We'll have equal incomes and equal outcomes and equal increases and, 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 and equal races. And it, it'll just be unbelievable. In other words, concentration camps where everybody's equal. You saw what happened during the pandemic. If the economy collapses, the dollar is destroyed, pensions, Social Security, Medicare, savings, the entire economic infrastructure burns up. You ain't seen nothing. Nothing. That's when you get the Third Reichs. That's when you get the the Mao's Chinas. That's when you get the Stalinist Russia. That's when you get the concentration camps. A full-on police state. That's where we're headed, in my humble opinion. I agree with this guy, but with certain nuanced differences. There are people to hold account. There are people to blame. 
I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Pure Talk believes in American values and that free should mean exactly that, free. Switch to Pure Talk today and get a free Samsung 5G smartphone. No four-line requirement, no activation fees, just a Samsung that's built to last with a rugged screen, quick-charging battery, and top-tier data security. Qualifying plans start at just 35 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, 15 gigs of data, and mobile hotspot. Pure Talk will connect you to the most dependable 5G network in America for half the price of Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year. So let Pure Talk's expert U.S. customer service team help you make the switch today. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, and claim your eligibility for your free, brand new Samsung 5G smartphone and start saving on wireless today. Again, go to puretalk.com slash Levin to switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk. Let's see here. I think a little bit of Bernie Sanders is in order, Mr. Purdue. He's on the late show. Now, why they bring on this old Soviet Marxist is really quite remarkable. A man is from Vermont. We know we love Vermont here, those who listen to the program, but Vermont is effectively a county. Nothing wrong with that, <clears throat> but this guy has a lot to say, and he's got the experience of, a, of an old-time red. And that's why these guys uh, who do the late night shows are a joke. They don't make jokes. They are a joke. And so he's on this program and he says, among other things, cut 17, go. So what is it that makes you angriest about capitalism? Because we, we live in a capitalistic system. What makes me angry is the massive inequalities that exist. Look. Few blocks away from here, there are people sleeping out on the street. Okay, let's stop. Let, let, let's stop for a minute. You know, I wrote about this in American Marxism. What is inequality based on, Mr. Producer? Your answer is what, and that's the point. It can be based on many things. It can be based on your education. It can be based on your lack of motivation or your motivation. It can be based on your brain power. It can be based on your just good luck and hard work. It can be based on hundreds of different things that have absolutely nothing to do with systemic inequality when it comes to economics. So what's the best way to deal with this? To have a centralized iron fist police state determine what people can have and not have? Because with that comes tyranny and totalitarianism. And Bernie the Red knows that because he supports tyranny and totalitarianism. The great danger of Marxism and its progeny, progressivism, American Marxism as I call it, the great danger is this. The propaganda is always about the people. The propaganda is always about justice and fighting inequality. The propaganda is always about creating evil and devil, devils, projecting, projecting onto other people. It's the system that has to be destroyed because there's inequality. The system. And yet the economic system, the capitalist system, the private property system, protected by the constitutional system and the rule of law, has created more prosperity for more people, equality or inequality aside, than any system on the face of the earth. Where our poor people, in many instances, are far wealthier I'm not saying wealthy, are far wealthier than people in the third world and ruled by banana republics where there's no hope, there's no opportunity, there's no effective means of using natural resources and material to the benefit of the people. The entire system is centralized. All the decisions are made by people who can't possibly have all the answers and they're driven by their own self-interest, their own demands for power. This is the bottom line. So he's very upset, he says, about inequality, massive inequality. Then he should favor less government. Then he should favor more freedom for the individual. 
which creates more opportunity. We know that because that's what we've done for over 200 years. But it's easy for the Marxists, you see. They always point that somebody has more than somebody else. Look down the road. It is an ideology built on one of the failures of the human character, quite frankly. Jealousy. Lack of responsibility. It doesn't matter what the guy down the street has. Millionaire, billionaire, poor, dirt poor. What are you going to do with your life? That's the issue. And what system is set up voluntarily, not by government? The natural economic system is market capitalism. The market tells you what is or is not. Not some iron-fisted potentate, some a-hole who's never done a damn thing from Vermont. You can have absolute equality. Or the closest damn thing to it. Go to Auschwitz. Take a look around. Those poor folks effectively had absolute equality. Go to communist China. Check out their concentration camps. They always need concentration camps, you see. Always need concentration camps to give us that that great paradise of absolute economic equality. And we'll all starve to death. I'll be right back. Pure Talk believes in American values and that free should mean exactly that. Free. Switch to Pure Talk today and get a free Samsung 5G smartphone. No four-line requirement, no activation fees, just a Samsung that's built to last with a rugged screen, quick-charging battery, and top-tier data security. Qualifying plans start at just 35 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, 15 gigs of data, and mobile hotspot. Pure Talk will connect you to the most dependable 5G network in America for half the price of Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year. So let Pure Talk's expert U.S. customer service team help you make the switch today. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, and claim your eligibility for your free, brand new Samsung 5G smartphone and start saving on wireless today. Again, go to puretalk.com slash Levin to switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk. This is the Octagon of Talk Radio, the Mark Levin Show. Call in now at 877-381-3811. Show me a... A country, a government, that has a centralized economic system where the people are flourishing. Where there's prosperity, where there's hope, where there's growth. There aren't any on the face of the earth, period. In fact, those regimes try to steal our technology because they can't produce it themselves. Show me one of these Bernie Sanders societies where people are free. Where they're happy. Show me where there is freedom of a thought, freedom of opinion. See, when the government has the power over the economy to decide who gets what, what means equality and all the rest, that means you have no power over yourself, period. I've probably read more about Karl Marx more about Maoism, Leninism, Gramskyism, and all the other isms on the communist side than anybody on TV or radio combined. It's okay. That's what I do in my life. And the funny thing is, Marx and Engels and their followers have no idea what they're talking about. After the Russian Revolution, Vladimir Lenin, he became ill. The country went to hell economically and otherwise. People were being slaughtered in the name of the people. Freedoms were being destroyed in the name of reform. Businesses were being stolen. Wealth was being stolen and redistributed based on political decisions. 
in the name of going after the rich, in the name of enforcing equality. And yet there's one thing Lenin said that was true. And of course, Lenin really never worked a day in his life either. Most of these people who've led these revolutions either came from highly educated families or very wealthy families. Not all, but most. Marx did. Mao did. Lenin did. Stalin did not. He was a thug from day one. Castro did. So what Lenin says is, Marx doesn't tell us what to do with the government. He doesn't tell us what we're supposed to do. We know about equality. We know about destroying the status quo and the institutions of capitalism and the bourgeois and all the rest. We know about all that. He told us to do all that. But what he didn't tell us, or didn't provide us with any guidance, is on how to actually govern. That is, what comes next? You see, Marx writes in the Communist Manifesto, this is why it's important to know history. He writes in the Communist Manifesto, as I've told you before, that there will be a period of despotism, a period, he doesn't know how long, in order to destroy, and he means kill, the opposition. In order to eliminate, eliminate all vestiges of the society, the lawyers, teachers, the professors, the journalists, any opposition, even within your own communist movement, they all have to go. He means kill them. You have to destroy the nuclear family. You have to destroy the relationship and the bond between parents and children because that is the worst obstacle to surrendering your soul, your freedom, your property to the state, your parents, your family. You can see that in our own country, what's taking place. And so what's left? There's no moral core. There's only the state. What about the economy? Well, it's left to a relative handful of people to decide all decisions, large and small, about the economy. You can see that happening in our country more and more. Ceiling fans, air conditioning systems, vehicles, people who know nothing about these things, who haven't built these things, who don't even know how they work, couldn't fix their car or their HVAC system if their life depended on it, dictating what kind of car and HVAC system and ceiling fan you need to have. It's all ideologically based. Never takes into consideration the nature of man. That man is not perfect. That all men are not economically equal and never will be. It's impossible. And so you destroy freedom. You destroy individual will. You have prisons. You have concentration camps. You have punishment on the spot. That's what you have. That's where we're heading. When you look at our injustice department and so forth. So Bernie Sanders goes on these shows. He won't come on this show. He won't come on my TV show. He won't come on my radio show. He won't, come, he, he won't do it. So secure is he in his ideology. And I'll tell you why none of these people want to come on their show. Because I know who they are. I know what they're peddling. I know history. I know economics. And they do not want to be confronted. Period. They'll go everywhere, but not here. And that goes for the Chris Christie's of the world, the Sununu's, the Hogan's, the Haley's too. They don't want to be confronted. Because I would upset their propaganda. I would upset their one sentences, their one-liners and so forth. And I'd make them think and I'd make them explain themselves. They don't want to do that. It's much easier to go on with George Stephanopoulos, who's going to throw you softballs about Trump. It's much easier for Nikki Haley to say that she's our savior, even though nobody really knows what the hell she stands for, including her. So when you have Bernie Sanders who goes on to a, a talk show with this idiot, 
Kilbert, what's his name? Colbert? Colbert? He's got free reign to go on there and trash America, trash our economic system. Best medical system on the face of the earth. More availability of more types of food than anywhere else on the face of the earth. The most reliable and dependable and ubiquitous energy system. All of it's being destroyed by these people. All of it. Starting with the civil society, starting with law and order, starting with the justice system, and everything else flows from there. They don't want to have that discussion. Instead, they want to bow to their boy Biden. They want to tell you he's brilliant. He's Einstein. When he's certifiable imbecile. They want to tell you he's fixed the economy. He's fixed it for Washington and the bureaucrats have got the biggest increase in 40 years. He's fixed it for them. He's fixed it for the politicians. He's enriched himself, his family. They've enriched themselves, their selves. But the people who work for a living and pay taxes for a living, they're not seeing it. They're not seeing any of it. Because it doesn't exist. Folks, the outrageous lawsuits that I just discussed with the help of Byron York's article that they're bringing against Donald Trump, they're bringing against you and me. They literally want to take out the soon-to-be Republican nominee for president so Joe Biden's not running against anybody. I want you to think about that. There's a conviction in October, and the judge says, okay, you're going to jail. The Republicans don't have an opportunity to have another convention and nominate somebody else. What's going on here is as evil, diabolical, tyrannical as we've ever seen in American history. By the man tomorrow is going to tell you he saved the nation and that he supports democracy. And by the way, you will know this, because in most totalitarian regimes, that's exactly what they do. They project on other people who they are and what they are. They create enemies of the state. They fearmonger. They change the meaning of words. Truth isn't truth anymore. They have their propagandists, all these ty- tyrannical regimes. They have their media, who regurgitate their liners, who use their talking points who attack the same people they attack. That's the Morning Joe. That's the whole lineup at MSLOSD. That's the whole lineup, starting with Jake Tapper on the Constipated News Network. That's the whole staff of reprobates at the New York Slimes and the Washington Compost. That's who they are. That's what they do. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Pure Talk believes in American values and that free should mean exactly that, free. Switch to Pure Talk today and get a free Samsung 5G smartphone. No four-line requirement, no activation fees, just a Samsung that's built to last with a rugged screen, quick-charging battery, and top-tier data security. Qualifying plans start at just 35 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, 15 gigs of data, and mobile hotspot. Pure Talk will connect you to the most dependable 5G network in America for half the price of Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year. So let Pure Talk's expert U.S. customer service team help you make the switch today. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, and claim your eligibility for your free brand new Samsung 5G smartphone and start saving on wireless today. Again, go to puretalk.com slash Levin to switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk. Bernie Sanders, cut 18, go. We should all, you know, we don't talk about it in Congress. We don't talk about it much in the media, but we have more income and wealth inequality in America today we've ever had in our history. Well, maybe it's because you're importing poor people from other countries. Maybe it's because 80 years of the New Deal has failed and has created economic dislocations. Maybe it's because of the massive tax rates and endless uh, regulations and the unpredictability of government at all levels that make it difficult, difficult to make a buck. 
We have more inequality than any time in our history. I don't even know what that means. What does that mean? Based on what? Based on nothing. Now here's their trick. I've talked about this with you too. It's also in one of my books, which one I can't remember. That is, they never talk about, when they talk about income at the lower steps on the ladder. Oh, this is in uh, the Democrat Party Hates America, actually. The amount of money that is transferred to people through what we'll loosely call the welfare state. You see, people aren't actually making what they say in the census they're making. Because they're specifically told not to include local, state, and federal benefits. When you include local, state, and federal benefits as a general matter, in the vast majority of cases, the people at the lower level of the ladder earning more than the average income in virtually the rest of the world. Did you know that, Mr. Producer? Because you read the book. So Bernie Sanders lies. They have to lie. Marxists have to lie. Biden has to lie. The Democrat Party must lie. Our media have to lie in order to perpetuate this fraud on the American people. In order to trash our country, tear down our institutions, and replace them with God knows what. They're literally taking the freest, greatest country on the face of the earth and destroying it. For no reason whatsoever but their own power trip. It's my belief, through my reading and my understanding, and my own gained knowledge, that the history of mankind, for most of the history of mankind, has been a history of tyranny. It's been a history of some form of genocidal totalitarianism. For most of mankind's history, men are jealous of each other. Men don't follow the law. Men are born with original sin. That's what the Christians say. It's not what the Jews say, but I agree with the Christians on this one. It is the rare, remarkable, magical occasion where a republic is born. You had Athens. It destroyed itself. You had the first 500 years of a thousand year empire in Rome. They destroyed themselves. They destroyed themselves, which made it possible for the people outside of these countries to finish them off. You had the Jewish people in the second temple They destroyed themselves, finished off by the Romans. You had the great British Empire, which is no empire anymore. And the most magnificent of all, you have the American people and the American continent, which is going the way of Athens, Rome, and all the rest, destroying itself from within. How dare we do this to our children and grandchildren? He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Is that you? Everybody out there, is that you? I'm Mark Levin. Our number, 877-381-3811. 877-381-3811. There's a phony hack leftist so-called report at the Washington Compost who's declared that the party of Reagan is now dead. It's now the party of of Trump. And this is the kind of low IQ, uninformed propaganda we get 
from Aaron Blake and his ilk, the compost, the slimes, and other beehives of stupidity. While Reagan and Trump clearly are not identical, both in the way that they speak and the way that they govern, the fact is they had a great deal in common. And I'm going to bring Craig Shirley, the number one Reagan historian, a great historian, back in about 10 or 15 minutes on the program to explain this. Reagan was a traditional conservative, but he was a traditional conservative, not a ruling class Republican. So what I mean by that is he had solid conservative principles, whether it's the Constitution, whether it's capitalism and all the rest. But really, unlike any Republican in my lifetime, other than more recently, believe it or not, Rick Santorum, who's a very good man, Reagan felt, having left the Democrat Party, he said the Democrat Party left him, and I'm hoping more and more Democrats, particularly blue-collar Democrats, understand this. Reagan said, conservatism is the philosophy of the blue-collar man and woman. It is the philosophy of the blue-collar man and woman. That's what he said. It's not the philosophy of the ruling class. It's not the philosophy of the self-appointed elitists. It's not the philosophy of the Washington insiders. When you really break down conservatism into its pieces, before you put it back together again, it really is the philosophy of hardworking, law-abiding, tax-paying, American-loving patriots. The alternative is the opposite. This is what Reagan believed. This is how Reagan governed. Reagan saw what Marxists did in Hollywood. He saw what millionaire elitists believe and how they thought and how they talked about America behind the scenes. You see the same people at MSNBC and CNN. You read the same people at the New York Times and Washington Post if you waste your time at those places. It's the same as the Reds in Hollywood. That's who they are. Pretty much, that's who they are. And so Reagan and Trump, both. They had a message to reach out to non-Republicans as well as Republicans. Democrats. What today we would call working class Democrats. What we used to call moderate Democrats. You see, Hard-working Americans don't believe in Marxism like Bernie Sanders. Hard-working Americans don't believe in Islamicism like much of the Democrat Party. Hard-working Americans don't believe in open borders. Hard-working Americans believe that their hard work and the money they earn ought to belong to them and not be given to strangers, domestic or international. Hard-working Americans love this country and they want it secured, the border, for national security reasons. They don't want their schools and their hospitals, their emergency rooms taken over by people who aren't even supposed to be here. Reagan understood this. Donald Trump understands it. But the media are doing everything they can to try and portray Trump as an anomaly, as something that is alien to our republic, as a danger to our republic. You have a bunch of people who never supported Reagan, who didn't like Reagan, who tried to destroy Reagan before he became president, during his presidency, and soon after his presidency. Now pretending that they liked Reagan, they supported Reagan, they voted for Reagan. Or maybe they didn't do any of those things, but at least they respected Reagan. But not Trump, they say. He's different. I knew both men. 
I know Trump, and I knew Reagan. Wasn't best friends with Reagan, but I worked for Reagan. I worked with the Attorney General in the United States, Edwin Meese, who was his closest confidant. I campaigned for Reagan in 76. I campaigned for Reagan in 1980. I knew who he was. I know what he believed. I know not, uh, Donald Trump very, very well. Personally, publicly, his policies. Isn't it amazing, folks? Just want you to think about this. For, I'm 66. God, that's frightening. Comes fast. Comes fast. But I've been involved in the conservative movement since I was 13 years old. There's not another host in America who can say that. Maybe Ben Shapiro. That's about it. I didn't have an epiphany. This has always been my belief system. Because as a kid, I would read a lot. Did sports a lot, too. But that's what I believed. And I'm convinced I did it at that age because I didn't like authority. I was a good kid. I didn't defy my parents. I didn't do drugs. I didn't do any of that stuff. But I didn't like strangers telling me what to do. Period. I always felt, who the hell do they think they are? My parents? They're not my parents. Let alone the government. So I was sort of libertarian, conservative, traditional conservative. I read what everything I could. From Bill Buckley and... Barry Goldwater's famous book, Conscience of a Conservative, but of course, the Austrian school economists, Edmund Burke, Adam Smith, others I read, studied on my own. Certainly wasn't taught this in public school. I would watch Firing a Line. I would watch the PBS specials, Free to Choose, with Milton Friedman. I miss these men and these people. Tom Saul's books. Tom Saul on on these various programs was unparalleled. By the way, any time he has a book out, he wants to come on my show, first and foremost, and I'm more than happy to have him on TV. Because I just interview people differently. I know who Ronald Reagan was, and I know who Donald Trump is. Is it Donald Trump's Republican Party? Yes. Yes. Every bit as much as it was Ronald Reagan's Republican Party. The party isn't some independent entity without leadership. But the effort by the Wall Street Journal nerds, by the pseudo-intellectuals and phony historians, by the never-Trumpers, by the radical left, the Marxists, the Islamists, the Democrat Party and their media, to try and create an impression, a myth, a fiction around Donald Trump needs to be confronted. You see, so radical, so extreme, so anti-American have the ruling class and their media become that if you love your country, if you stand up for working class people, If you say no to massive centralized government, no to confiscatory taxes where you redistribute wealth to people who haven't earned it, including aliens, will you believe that America should have a border, should have the strongest military on the face of the earth? Well, you love your cops, you love your your veterans, you love your military personnel. You're a right winger. You're a danger to democracy. When we come back, We'll have a further discussion with this with a true historian, Craig Shirley. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Craig Shirley, the foremost expert on Ronald Reagan. The search for Reagan, the appealing intellectual conservatism of Ronald Reagan. Craig Shirley, the Washington Post is out there. They don't know Ronald Reagan. They don't care about Ronald Reagan. They just push their crap and their propaganda, and they want you to believe that uh, Donald Trump, they said today, this Aaron Blake, I think his name is, he said today that it's no longer Reagan's party, it's Trump's party. 
Is it really that black and white, Craig Shirley? No, no, Mark. First of all, thank you. It's good to be with you, Brother Levin. Um, it, it, the, the Washington Post doesn't know what the hell they're talking about. It, 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 I don't even read it anymore because it's so nonsensical. It's like PBS News. I don't even watch it anymore because it's just yeah. it's just wokeism trash. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I read the article. It's silly. It's nonsensical. And by the way, it can be both Reagan's party and Trump's party because mm-hmm. guess what? They both embrace the same issues. Now, the Republican Party has changed over the years. We, we supported Smoot Hawley, which was high tariffs, so we became a free trade party. Now we're back to tariffs. Is that on many issues, the Republican Party has changed over the years. I remember in 1970, during the Nixon administration, the economy was in, the economy was in bad shape. And massive personal tax cuts were proposed by Senator Walter Mondale and Senator Ted Kennedy <laughs> and the Nixon, for, to stimulate the economy. And the Nixon mm-hmm. administration said no. What we need is massive federal spending. Now, that, the, the complete role re, re, reversal now for many mm-hmm. reasons, including the intellectual reason of Reagan. He understood that money is power and that he wanted to transfer power from Washington back to the individual by cutting their taxes and giving more th- them their money. He, he understood you know, that power cannot be manufactured or created. It can only be moved around. And since the time of the New Deal up until 1980, power had been moving away from the citizenry and to Washington and through tax cuts and through regulation, even speech regulation in many cases, uh, access to uh, access to uh, speech. You know, before, you know, when they had, when they had the Fairness Doctrine is that you, you couldn't go on the radio and, and spout your political views mm-hmm. uh, because of the Fairness Doctrine. You had to put on if you had put on a liberal for 15 seconds and you had to put on a conservative. For 15 seconds it was that nonsensical but the government regulated speech and so it, in, a, in, in, in that way the government was taking power away from the individual and accumulated in washington reagan understood this and he in many ways including the historic tax cuts of 1981 it was sending power from washington back to the states and the individuals just the way the framers and founders intended uh, the Washington Post. Th- this is this is type of thinking. You know, you and I have talked about it many times. This this type of thinking, this type of intellectual thinking, is beyond the capacity of the Washington Post. They don't understand. Mm-hmm. They don't understand. And they're all always out to do a hit job. They were yeah, out to course. do hit jobs on Ronald Reagan during his time, weren't they? The whole time. Look, I, I one time I counted the, the, how many editorials. From the eight years of Reagan's presidency, well, during the campaign, and then through the eight years of his presidency, and I lost count. There were hundreds of editorials denouncing Reagan, and maybe only a few. Even conflicts with the Soviet Union, like KAL 007 and the Kili Laro, and so many other foreign policy conflicts, they invariably always took the side of the Soviets, took the side against their own country, and took the side of the Soviet Union. The communist collectivist state, which were tortured in prison and murdered uh, people, uh, which imprisoned so many people behind the Iron Curtain, is that the Washington Post could be counted on always to take the side of, of evil. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to Trump, uh, there's this relentless obsession with trying to define yes. him and destroy him, even, even during the time when he wasn't president, it was going on, wasn't it? it, it yeah, sure. Blame him for everything. This is, look, look, I've already seen some uh, new early news reports about uh, Biden's uh, uh, State of the Union speech tomorrow, and he's going to divide Americans again. Besides, you know, you're either side of the Constitution or you're against the Constitution. Well, I'm sorry, but stupid, it isn't that simple. It isn't that simple at all. But that's what he's going to try, which is which is his specialty is dividing people. Hmm. You know, you know, you, you we we were both there. We were both young Reaganites in the '80s, and we both remember when Reagan left office in January of '89. He had a 73% approval rating. It's just astronomical for a mm-hmm. three out of four Americans said, "Hey, I like this guy. He's done. He's made, you know, my country a better and safer place to live and a freer place to live." And Biden has been around through Reagan, been around through the Bushes. He's been around mm-hmm. through Trump, and he is a he was, really think, yeah, loathsome, nasty. There. Hold on now. He's really a loathsome, nasty street politician oh. who tried to destroy 
judicial nominee after judicial nominee, Republican presidency after Republican presidency. He hasn't changed, has he? No, he hasn't. He hasn't. The meanness that was there 40 years ago, by the way, you, you recounted presidents. I think you actually may go back to the Franklin Pierce presidency. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Uh, uh, but he, he, I remember the Robert Bork hearings where he oh was so God. nasty and mean. To, a great, 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 great American. Mm-hmm. A great thinking, intellectual American. How nasty and, and, and personal he was to Bork and other judicial nominees of, uh, of Reagan and others. Is that this is a, this is a petty, small man. And he's, he's going stupid. to go down in history. Stupid. Stupid. Yes, he's stupid. I mean, look, on Israel, on concentration, yeah. look, he is a creature of government. He's been in government his whole life. He views that through his prism. And so he views that his job is to acquire more power and to take it away from the individual. And that's where, you know, is that, uh, uh, is that you know, Reagan was so brilliant about, you know, he said many, many times in his speeches as president, about the dignity and and power and rights of the individual. The book is The Search for Reagan, the appealing intellectual conservatism of Ronald Reagan. Reagan didn't like Biden, did he? No, and, you know, that's a good point. That's such a good point. He said so in his diaries. Uh, You know, and he was very measured in his diaries about who he didn't like, but you could tell he... Uh, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't like him at all. I think I told you before. One other person he didn't like was uh, Lowell Weicker from Connecticut, a senator Can't from Connecticut. Him. You remember? You remember him? He oh, was. He yeah. was. Uh, yeah. And Reagan wrote in his diaries after meeting with him that he was a quote a pompous, no good, fathead, <laughs> and a schmuck. <laughs> he said schmuck. That's funny. Yes, he said schmuck. He said schmuck. Well, and you know, and he never said he never really spoke that way. So he, he must have really despised this guy, and I can't blame him. Low yes. Weicker is the Chris Christie, the Chris Sununu, the Larry Hogan, the Mitt Romney, the Susan Collins, the Lisa Murkowski types, who undermine the leader of their party, the man who gets elected president every time. Craig Shirley, stick with us a moment. The book is "The Search for Reagan: The Appealing Intellectual Conservatism of Ronald Reagan." Get it on. Amazon, any major bookstore, but it's very, very important now as people try to rewrite the Reagan history in order to try and destroy Donald Trump. We'll be right back. Mark Levin, the thunder on the right. Call in now, 877-381-3811. Craig Shirley, when uh, Ronald Reagan was a Democrat, an FDR Democrat, he was in Hollywood, he was head of the Screen Actors Guild. Unfortunately, I'm a member of that union. I can't get the hell out of there. And um, he saw the ugly underbelly of anti-Americanism and Marxism, and he left the party. Yes. And that had an enormous impact on him, didn't it? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, he'd been moving to the right, uh, and, and the Democratic Party was moving to the left, uh, obviously, um, uh, you know, for many years. He was famously once said when he switched parties that, uh, I didn't leave my party, but my party left me. But first, for his first encounter with the left was with communist provocateurs in Hollywood. They were trying to subvert the, subvert the Hollywood system and make propaganda pro-Soviet movies and make anti-American movies. And in fact, they su- succeeded. Uh, in the early 1940s, there were two disgusting pro-Soviet movies called Song of Russia and Mission to Moscow. And if you can, if you can sit long enough for 90 minutes without gagging, uh, you, you can you can look look at these movies. They were just they portrayed you know the Soviet Union as a workers' paradise, which of course we know was a complete lie. And there was a every working man had a you know had a you know bowl of borscht and vodka on the table and this and that and the other thing. It was all a lie, of course. Uh, it was a it was basically a Potemkin village. Uh, but they, the so but the Soviets had agents in Hollywood in the 30s and 40s, and even still now or well, not now but uh, but there's still provocateurs in Hollywood trying to. Of course, they're, they're, now they're studio executives and actors who are producing left-wing movies. You know, mm-hmm. they've come out of the closet, come out from the shadows. But that started his historic move to the right. Then, uh, during the during the 40s, he was paying his taxes were were upwards of 90 percent of his income, and that of course rankled him because he saw the the hard you know the sweat of his brow was being sucked up by government. 
and leaving nothing for him. And that we, he didn't acquire the family and pro-life message until the 70s, but he did acquire that. And so by 1980, he was a fully formed conservative, intellectual conservative, who was bent on empowering the individual, the privacy, dignity, uh, and rights of the individual. And that included uh, the unborn child, because individual rights, he believed, extended to the fetus. Uh, so so he, by 1980, he's a fully formed cons- libertarian conservative. And he, he, when I call him libertarian, I would say he was a small L libertarian. He mm-hmm. was not, you know, a whacked out libertarian who said we need to dismantle defense and we didn't make pot available for everything. He wasn't that way at all. But he did say, he did say to Reason Magazine in 1975 that libertarianism was the fundamental basis of American conservatism. And in that regard, I agree with him. I don't disagree with that either. But he was pro-defense. He built up the military like nobody before yeah. him. Yes, yes. One of the differences, and yet it's an overlap to some extent, between Reagan and Trump is Reagan really was a philosophical conservative. Yes. I think Trump has come to the same conclusion on most issues through his own experiences and through common sense, because in so many ways, conservatism is common sense. What do you think of that? Common sense. Intellectualism is common sense. American, American conservatism, which is distinctly different from European conservative conservatism, because in London, the power flows downward from the money elites in, in London to the people. Here as designed under the uh, the constitution power flows upward from the people to the to the to the Washington governmental system it's got, it become perverted in some year in many years but over, over many years but that's the way it was designed that's the way what Reagan believed and that's what he understood so Trump's policies are not radical like these people try to make them out to be his views are not totalitarian or dictatorial and in that sense, didn't they try and play the same game with Ronald Reagan? That is, to oh, suggest he was God. an out-of-control fascist? He was out of control. He was dim-witted. He was a grade B Hollywood actor with premature, premature orange hair, which is what Gerald Ford called him. Uh, he was a lightweight. He was an intellectual lightweight. Uh, it, the, everything in the book and more was thrown at Ronald Reagan by the, by the Washington elites. And the same... People and their children are now doing the same thing with Trump. There's one thing I think that people have to understand, and they probably do more, better than I do, which is that there were three really important elections in America in America that were from that about reasserting the power of the individual over the state. 1828 with the election of Andrew Jackson, 1980 with the election of Ronald Reagan, and 2024 with the election of Donald Trump. Donald Trump, I, I he un- understands emotionally, and I hope he does intellectually. Uh, he's a very, very bright guy, is that he is leading something that's going to go down in history as a very important election. Mm-hmm. I said to my wife, we were at CPAC, we were listening to Trump speak. He was hilarious. He knows, yeah. he knows, his, he knows who he is, and he knows who his enemies are, and he knows who his supporters are. He's much smarter than they give him credit for, but they do this with all Republicans, of course. And I turned to her as I did with Reagan. In my own belief, and I said, "Right, you're never gonna, you're never gonna see a man like this again as president or running for president." So take it all in. Yeah, you agree with that? He's, he is. Yeah, I agree. He's sui generis. He is yeah. a unique individual, just as Ronald Reagan was a unique individual. They weren't a rubber stamp politician like Richard Nixon, uh, like Lyndon Johnson, like Jimmy Carter, like Gerald Ford. These are both men who think outside the box and are outside the establishment. Therefore, the establishment is very threatened by them, which causes them to hurl insults and indignities and, and try to undermine, undermine them as candidates and as men and as individuals. They did it to try to do it to Ronald Reagan. Uh, he, 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 he just, you know, he, he, like Donald Trump, sloughed it off. Fluffed, mm. You know, just that, you know, these people, uh, I have nothing in common with, and I, you know, it's, one thing about Reagan was he loved to get out of Washington. He loved the White House, obviously, for historical reasons, but he went to Camp David almost every weekend, and, and of course, he went to the ranch as often as possible, 
uh, and he wanted to get out of Washington. He wanted to get in touch with American people. He wanted to, he wanted to get away from the corruption and the lobbyists and the money and everything else of Washington. Mm-hmm. And uh, you describe there Joe Biden. He's everything that's wrong with the country. He's everything that's exactly. wrong with Washington. He's exactly, he is not just the anti-Trump in terms of his vile, vicious propaganda, but he's the anti-Trump in terms of viewpoints, principles, belief systems. Trump loves America. I can't yeah. say the same for Biden. He's all constantly no. trying to fundamentally transform it. Absolutely. Well, just look at the border. Look at the border. No, yeah. what kind of man would be allowing that to happen unless he truly disliked his own country? Mm-hmm. What, what, what kind of president? Can I mean, can you think of anybody down through history that would allow that to happen? No. Except not for one. Joe Biden? No, no, I, no, no, course, no not Democrat. Even, not even Jimmy Carter. Not even no. Jimmy Carter. Not I even, agree. Not even Lyndon Johnson. Not even Harry Truman, who is actually a pretty good president. Actually, a very mm-hmm. good president. But they were all constitutionalists. They all loved their country, and they all believed in the secure borders. And, it, by the way, this nonsense about Reagan and uh, immigration, you know, in his farewell address, he talked about America with walls and, and a gate that was open for people who came through legally. That's the one part the left always deliberately d- deletes or ignores from what Reagan said in his farewell address. And I'll tell you the other part, since I was with Attorney General Meese, when this issue of amnesty came up for 2.3 million illegal aliens. Right. They believed, unfortunately, that they had a deal to secure that border once and for all. Right. And the Democrats burned them, as they burn everybody. And Reagan's yeah. attitude changed a lot. He didn't hate the people who got amnesty, quite the contrary. But he understood that the Democrats were despicable and they couldn't be trusted. And he, res- and, and he resented it. And he remembered it. So I just want people to know, for Reagan, it wasn't an ideological thing that he supports amnesty. He thought he got something for it, and he certainly did not. I could not agree more. I could not agree more. But uh, let me take it one step further. Now, I haven't, uh, I haven't, there's no Reagan writings about this, but I think I've studied his thinking over my lifetime long enough to understand that two two things. It was still the battle of the Cold War. And was he going to hand Gorbachev and the Soviets a PR coup by, by arbitrarily kicking out two, th- two million people and, and, make, and give them such a, a PR advantage in the world state. Number one. Number two is a lot of those refugees came from communist countries, came from mm-hmm. Cuba, came from Nicaragua. They came here, which, which is legal, as a political refugee and escaping the communism of Nicaragua, Cuba, and other countries. No president has ever done what Biden's done. And now we learn from the Daily Mail, we learn from uh, uh, CIS that Joe Biden's been flying hundreds and hundreds of thousands of illegal aliens into this country under the cover of dark using the Biden apps where they contact us. They've landed and put them through 43 different airports. They immediately receive work permits and they're immediately on a track in two years to become legal citizens. What do you make of that? It's, It's nauseating. In the extreme, in the extremists, is that it, 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 there's no words to describe it. It's totally anti-American, anti-intellectual, anti-individual. An, it, there's nothing. There's no way you can defend it. There's no way you can defend it. It is, it is just a, a rotten thing to do. And he'll be up there tomorrow night blaming Trump, blaming the Republicans. It's right. the it's 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 the guy who burns down the building, who stands there and watches it, and then comes up with all the ideas on how to fix it. That's Joe Biden. Well, that, that that's right out of the screw tape letters. Yeah. You know, with the, you know, C.S. Lewis. You know, if a man is drowning, uh, yeah. hand him a bucket of water. If a man if a man is house on fire, hand him a box of matches. Do mm-hmm. everything to distract their attention from what is important. Screw tape said to his uh, to his uh, to his young. Uh, Ward, he was teaching about how to how to be evil. C.S. Lewis considered one of the great Christian thinkers. I just consider him one of the great thinkers of all time. Period. Absolutely, and absolutely. fantastic Truly writer great too. Man. Truly well, great folks, man. This is a great book from a great friend. That is the search for Reagan, the appealing intellectual conservatism of Reagan. You learn about Ronald Reagan, and then you'll see, you'll read that, and you'll say, "Wait a minute, they hated him too." Wait a minute, these phony Republicans who claim to support him now in order to attack Trump never support it. Let, let's just underscore that on the way out here. These people who say 
It's no longer Reagan's party. They backed Reagan. They never did, did they? No, but I want to say one thing is that one, just one thing is, is that the party has shifted positions over the years. That's true. Until Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan's issues in 1980 are the same issues the Republican Party is embracing today, whether it's life, whether it's tax cuts, whether it's shrinking the bureaucracy, whether it's federalism. On, uh, name, name one issue. Name one mm-hmm. issue. The, the, the party, the party, and that's Reagan's long-lasting contribution to the Republican Party is that he made it a party of principles. Mm-hmm. He made it a party of principles, and the, the, the people, you know, who understand that have not deviated. Trump understands it. Mm-hmm. And by the way, if I don't want to embarrass you, but thank you very much for writing the forward to the book. I, I'm right. really in your debt. No, it's my honor. You're not in my debt ever. Whenever I can promote smart people doing smart things to try and save this republic and educate the American people, I'm I'm all in. And you're one of the best, Craig Shelley. The book is Search for Reagan, The Appealing Intellectual Conservatism of Ronald Reagan. Get it right now on Amazon.com, any major bookstore. God bless you, my friend. Bless you, too. Thank you, Mark, very, very much. Take, Take care of yourself. We'll be right back. Mark Levin. We want to uh, congratulate our friend Peter Schweitzer and his also fantastic book on Communist China, Blood Money, which is number one on the New York Times bestseller list. And so we want to congratulate him. It's always an honor to have him on our programs. We only bring you the best authors, the best people, the best thinkers, the best writers on issues that matter. We don't do book notes here, but we do a deep dive with our authors and what they write, and I do read their books, and I actually let them speak. So I think that's important. In New York, our friend Moses. We don't have a lot of time, brother. Go. Not a problem, Mark. Always a pleasure, my friend. Good to talk you to too, you again. Bro. So, Mark, here's my t- here's my concern and also my question. Like, well, what does the GOP have to do, right? So now yeah. we're functionally funding taxpayer-funded asylum fraud, because 90% of all these millions of people that have come to the country are not going to get asylum. So now my concern is, what should the GOP do? And even worse, we're going to have congressional districts in the next census that should not exist, because they're going to be counted towards apportionments in these congressional districts. Well, that's what's going on. That's what I've been talking about. So even while they create... uh, confusion and anarchy when it comes to actual voting. What they are doing, though, is they're pumping up these Democrat districts with illegal aliens because, remember, everybody, the Census and the Commerce Department have determined on their own that persons in the Constitution doesn't mean American citizens. It means persons, anybody who comes into the country. So illegal aliens here illegally, their numbers will count toward the creation of congressional districts And the Democrats are doing this purposely in order to take the House. And that's what Moses is talking about. Well, I don't know. There's no simple answer other than we better get control of this government before it's completely out of control. And we don't have the power to do a damn thing about it, because that's what the that's what the Democrats are up to. Moses, call again, brother, a little earlier in the show. We'll be happy to bring you on. We salute our armed forces, police officers, firefighters, emergency personnel, our truckers, freedom fighters all over the world. Our brothers and sisters in Israel and Ukraine and America, God bless those of you who are patriots, and I am blessed to have you in the audience. I'll see you tomorrow.